Before we get started, I want to encourage you to subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications so that you don't miss any of the content that is released by Go Collect. And if you're interested, head over to Reggie Collects here on YouTube. It's Wednesday, and you know what that means. It's time for the Go Collect Weekly Speculation Recap Video. Stay tuned. Reggie here, your friendly neighborhood bodybuilder and comic book collector and the host of the Go Collect Weekly Speculation Recap Video. And I wanna welcome you to another episode. In this video, we are going to spend some time talking about six blog posts that have been sent in to Go Collect. And I will tell you that this week's rundown is pretty solid. And this first article is actually a pretty good one because what the blogger attempts to do is to provide you with some context for how you should actually be thinking about speculation. And he basically says, you need to think about speculation the way that you would approach any type of business. And I'm not going to dig into the details of this article because I honestly want you to take some time to read it. But what I will do is highlight the high level points that the blogger touches on. And my hope here is that you will be enticed to go down to the description and find this blog post, click on the link, and then go read it for yourself in its entirety because I think that there are honestly some nuggets here that you might benefit from. So in this article, Richard basically says, given that speculation should be approached as a business, take these rules as ways to maximize your profits while minimizing your efforts. And there are several points that he touches on here. The first is you don't need to own every book. And as hard as it is to hear that, Richard is actually spot on. You don't need to own every book and it's literally impossible to actually own every book. But I will tell you that we all have a little bit of FOMO, a little bit of fear of missing out that motivates us to feel like we have to own every book. But Richard is like, you don't have to do it. Let yourself off the hook. And again, there's some additional details here that you definitely want to check out. The second thing that he talks about is stay within your budget. And this assumes I think Richard does, that you should set a budget. So set a budget and then stay within it because these are good ways to keep yourself on track like any good business. If you spend more than you make, you won't be in business for very long. The third thing he talks about, research will make you money. So take the time to dig into the details. Don't just assume that what you hear is fact. You need to dig into it for yourself to ensure that when you hand over some money, you know what it is that you're buying and the reason for it. The fourth thing he talks about, timing is everything. And he is not wrong about that because if you mistime it, there is a chance that you'll walk away with no profits. So timing is very critical. And then the very last point here is skate to where the puck will be. And if any of you are hockey players, you know exactly what this analogy is. And so I am not gonna dig into this one anymore. These are five solid tips that Richard is actually offering up for you to think about. And again, the link, the link to this blog post, as are all of the other blog posts that I'll be talking about, are down in the description of this video. So we have been teased endlessly by Marvel movies that have come out. And we've been teased that this character or that character is going to make an appearance at some point. And Marvel does a really fantastic job of sprinkling in these little tidbits in their movies. And there is one character that has been teased for years that I think people are really excited about seeing on the big screen. And it is none other than Prince Namor. People are super pumped about this guy and have been. And it seems like every, you know, six months or so, there's a new rumor out there that Prince Namor is about to make an appearance in an MCU movie. And again, this is one of those ones that I think 
has been out there for a while. It's been teased. There's lots of reasons why we haven't necessarily seen him in a movie. And a lot of it has to do with the rights for the Submariner, the same way that the rights for the Incredible Hulk are kind of tied up in some other things. And so I think that there's good reason for it, but that doesn't mean that people aren't speculating on when he actually might make an appearance. And in this blog post written by Robert, he says, or he asks, is Namor finally on his way to the MCU. And in this blog post, he spent some time talking about and making a case for why Namor might be on his way to the movies at some point when some of this stuff in the world actually blows over. Uh, but Robert highlights here in the article that if you have about a half a million dollars laying around, you can actually pick up the first appearance of, of Namor, who appeared in Marvel Comics number one in 1939. I actually read that issue uh, digitally because I don't own it because I don't have a half million dollars. But uh, Robert says that if you have it, that is a great big book to pick up. Uh, but if you're a little shy, if you're a little shy on cash, you might want to take a look at Submariner number one. And this is actually a pretty cool book. Uh, and there's a lot of heat and excitement around that particular book. And he also highlights another book that you might want to consider picking up as well. But if you believe, like Robert, that Namor is going to be making his way to the MCU, you definitely want to take a look at this blog post because there's, there's an argument that is being made here. And again, like we just talked about in the last blog post, you want to do your research and you want to make sure you understand the argument that is being made before you hand over some cash. In this next blog post, Norman makes an argument why the Bronze Age might be considered the anti-hero age. And he specifically highlights two books that feature some anti-heroes that you might be interested in. And he basically makes the argument that these are essentially forgotten books of the Bronze Age. And Norman specifically highlights two really cool books. One of them is Astonishing Tales number 25. And this is actually the first appearance of, of Deathlock, which, you know, Norman essentially calls the Terminator before Arnold Schwarzenegger actually became the Terminator. And in this blog post, he highlights some of the values associated with Astonishing Tales number 25. He points out here that a 9.8 of this book is selling for roughly $2,000, which is a nice chunk of change. But when you go to like an 8.5, the values fall off dramatically. An 8.5 will run you about $107 and they fall off even more as you go down to a 6.5. You can actually pick that up for about $95. And Norman makes a case here that the Marvel Universe has essentially forgotten about this hero and he talks about, or this anti-hero, he talks about how he did make an appearance, I think it was Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., but Norman makes the case why that wasn't necessarily his best showing. The second anti-hero that Norman talks about is Conan the Barbarian, who was actually created by Robert E. Howard in the 1930s. And I actually did not know this, but Marvel acquired the rights to Conan in 1970. And Roy Thomas and Barry Windsor Smith actually teamed up to bring out Conan the Barbarian number one. Really cool cover here. The blogger points out here in the article that a 9.8 of this book will set you back around $5,100, which is, again, a, a healthy amount of money. At an 8.5, it'll run you about $336, and a 6.5 will run you about $250. So if you believe that, you know, the Bronze Age is maybe in, you know, a forgotten age, and if you believe that Conan the Barbarian and, and Deadlock are forgotten characters, these could be two books that you might want to pick up and add to your collection. This next blog post is uh, near and dear to my heart, I have to tell you, because it is all about Spider-Man's rogues gallery. And just like the blogger, I believe that Spider-Man has arguably one of the best rogues gallery out there. And it, for me, 
is part of what makes Spider-Man such an appealing character because he has this wonderful cast of a family, of friends, and also of villains that essentially surround him. And in this blog post, they essentially highlight six villains that could potentially appear at some point in an MCU movie. And I'm curious, I'm curious about this. And I want to encourage you to, to put your list down in the comment section. I want to see if your list looks or sounds anything like this one that Robert is actually suggesting. Starting with number six, and I'll count down, Robert says that Tombstone would be a fantastic character to actually see in the MCU. And he had his first appearance in Web of Spider-Man number 36. Taking the fifth spot is the Chameleon, a character that actually had his first appearance in the very first Amazing Spider-Man and surprisingly, I don't think has appeared in anything related to the MCU, which is, which is really interesting considering he is arguably one of Spider-Man's oldest foes having again appeared in Amazing Spider-Man number one. Taking the fourth spot is the Black Cat, who first appeared in Amazing Spider-Man number 194. In the third spot is the Hobgoblin, a character that actually appeared in the Amazing Spider-Man number 238. In the second spot, this one is probably one of my favorite villains. It is the Scorpion who had his first appearance in Amazing Spider-Man number 20 and one of my personal favorite covers. I absolutely love the cover to Amazing Spider-Man number 20. And then the character that falls into the first spot is none other than Craven the Hunter who had his first appearance in Amazing Spider-Man number 15. And I think a lot of people are are hedging their bets for Craven. People love Craven. They want to see Craven's last hunt actually come to the big screen. And so I think that a lot of people are really rooting for him. But again, I'm curious what your list actually looks like. And I look forward to seeing those down in the description. But if you're interested in reading more about any of you know the, the blogger's suggestions, I encourage you to click on the link in the description and check out his blog post in its entirety. If you are a fan of Dwayne The Rock Johnson or DC, this next blog post is for you. And the blogger essentially asks a pretty provocative question and, and he wonders aloud if the Justice Society of America could be DC's Avengers. And essentially what he does in this blog post is he spends a little bit of time comparing and contrasting the 2017 release of Justice League to the Avengers Infinity War in 2018. And he kind of highlights here that the Justice League fell short on its own accord, but fell short dramatically when compared to the Avengers movie. And so he's kind of floating it out there that the Justice Society of America could be DC's answer to the Avengers if done correctly. And he highlights here that Dwayne The Rock Johnson is actually working on a Black Adam movie. And it was rumored just a few days ago when this was written that there may be two different versions of the Justice Society in the Black Adam movie. And it says that one of these teams could be set in the past and one of them in the present day. And it's it's rumored that the, the older team, the one that is set in the past, will be comprised of the Wizard, uh, Shazam, Hawkman, Hawkgirl, Dr. Fate, Jay Garrick, and even Alan Scott. And so again, these are rumors that are out there and we don't know whether they're founded or not, but it could definitely be interesting. So if you are a fan of Black Adam or Dwayne The Rock Johnson or DC, you might wanna check out this blog post to see if this argument is compelling enough for you because there's also a book that the blogger highlights that if you have the money, you might wanna pick up. Link is in the description. 
According to Mike W, all roads lead to Noel. <laughs> uh, there are a lot of people out there that are huge fans of Noel. Folks love this guy, and a lot of people believe that everything that Donnie Cates is out there doing right now will all lead back to Noel. And there is a, a strong belief, because I've actually received these questions myself, there is a strong belief that the next Venom movie could have a tie to Null. There are a lot of folks that believe that Null is going to be making an appearance in a movie at some point in the near term, right? Once we get past all of this stuff that's out there right now, but there are folks that believe that Noel could uh, appear in a movie. And this blogger makes a pretty interesting argument, actually citing some, some interviews that Donnie Cates actually conducted back in the day. So if you believe that Noel, then that all roads lead back to Noel, then you might want to check out this blog post and you might also want to pick up a copy of Venom number three from 2018. And I can tell you for a fact that I have never been the biggest Venom fan. But what Donnie Cates did with Venom in this run is incredible. He added so many layers and so much dimension to Eddie Brock that you actually got to see him as a real person as a as a full character and not just this you know this crazed lunatic that was out there and, and it was masterfully done if, if you have not read the venom run i encourage you to read it and it doesn't matter whether you get it in floppies or graphic novels or you do it digitally i would encourage you to read it because it's actually a pretty solid read i mean he has a son he has a son i mean it's really good. Just trust me on this one. If you haven't read it, treat yourself. So there you have it. We have reached the end of this week's recap. I hope that you enjoyed it. I absolutely did. I, I enjoyed reading these blog posts and I, I learned a ton from reading them and then doing the videos. It has honestly made me a more well-rounded collector in many respects and also allows me to kind of stay up on what is actually happening out there. And, and trust me when I tell you, these blog posts are not that long, but there is enough substance there to kind of keep you in the know. So I definitely want to encourage you, if I haven't said it enough, I encourage you to check out the links in the description, but you can also head over to the Go Collect website because there is a lot of additional content that is found on that website that will probably help you tremendously if you are a collector or if you're a speculator. Um, I hope that you guys did enjoy it. I hope you will leave a comment behind and a thumbs up and then also tune in next week when we get to do this all over again.